Sometimes when we're looking for new ways to catch fish, we can look to old lures. This is the original Zoom Baby Brush Hog, and in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about how I use it. I'm going to crack open the vault and show you a, a special way that I rig it that's got me some bites in different circumstances, and it's been highly effective. So let's get into it. So in this video we're going to talk about the Zoom Baby Brush Hog, green pumpkin black flaked Zoom Baby Brush Hog, pretty standard bait. It's probably one of the original creature baits, probably the original creature bait. And I've got a special way that I rig this thing that's been kind of sneaky for me. I, I, I'm pulling it out of the vault, I'm going to share it with you because I, I, I think it's going to get you some bites. Um, so what I do, okay. Most people rig this thing standard Texas rig with a Texas rig weight on the end and you know maybe an EWG hook and they pitch this thing. Well, I'm doing it a little bit differently and, and what I do is I Nico rig this Zoom Bay Brush Hog. It's got some unique features on it, right? It's got the tails, it's got the flaps, it's got the legs, it's got the long skinny body and, and the baby one, which this is the baby one, uh, can almost perfectly imitate a crayfish when other crayfish baits are being primarily used. Uh, or in an area where people are just throwing wacky rig senkos or something. This can be very eff a, a very effective follow-up bait, uh, a very effective bait following behind people. So I Nico rig it. And what I'm going to show you is how I do that. Um, to do it, I use these surgical bands. I've got one here. Um, they come in, you know, I get, them in a, I get them on eBay and I'll leave the link in the description. I get a bag of these surgical tubes and they come in all kinds of, usually they're in a little bit different sizes. But then I usually cut them down to about that size, right? And what I'll do is I take my banding tool and I'll take my uh, brush hog and I'll slide it up. And I'm sliding it up just past these arms and I'm very careful when I do this. Like I'll stop my banding tool right there, right as those appendages stop, and I'll slide the band off very carefully. And what I'm trying to be careful of is I don't want to bust any of the appendages off, right? So I'll slide that thing off, pull that tool off, and I'm very, very careful to get the band on right above those legs and not pull on these, these appendages here because sometimes those will pop off and then you're starting over. So I get my band on and then I use two different weights with this system. I'll either use my reaction tackle nail weight, tungsten nail weights. They're small and that's what I like about the tungsten is in that thin little body of the, of the uh, baby brush hog. You don't want to be distorting the head of it with a gigantic weight. So I'll use that and I'll use it for sand, wood, softer bottoms where you know that sandy woody mix. If I'm in just rock, uh, a lot of times I'll use a tungsten screw lock weight and it's got a like a more of a button head on it. And when I use that one and I and I'm pulling and bouncing that thing, it will really click on the bottom. And so that if I'm in a rocky situation, I'm using a screw lock, any soft wood situation, I'm using the nail weight. But I put in center up the weight, get it in that soft skinny part of the head, get my weight in, right? And then I'm using a number one sized, either, you know, I'll use a drop shot hook, a number one size drop shot hook. Some people will use Nico hooks, but this one has been super effective for me. And then I will come in and I will catch a little bit of the plastic when I'm rigging this thing and then I'll get the band, right? I'll get a little bit of the band. And so what happens is then, um, when this thing lands, when you're pulling it around and it lands, it lands like this, and that, that posture of that thing with those two uh, main flappers pointed up look just like the pinchers of a crawfish. And so what I'll also do is I'll take and I'll cut those with the scissors, I'll slice these right down the middle into two open claws, right? It's shaped like a claw. I'll cut that thing and get that thing uh, looking like a craw. And then what I'll even do is I'll take and I'll take uh, some spike it, some orange spike it, and I'll dip these, I'll dip those two uh, tips of that craw, uh, of those craws in there. 
And then when that thing is getting pulled forward like that, that's in a posture that looks just like a crayfish. And, and the whole Nico rig uh, presentation, this, the flowing and moving appendages of this thing, and those and those the posture of those craw is almost perfectly imitating a crayfish. It's the right size. This thing just flat gets bit. And so you can pitch this around docks. You can crawl this thing around wood. This has been a super effective bait for me for both largemouth and especially smallmouth. So this is a go-to. Uh, whenever the crawfish are molting, uh, whenever the crayfish are hatching, uh, I'll be throwing this thing. It's rigged up and we're throwing it. It's been super effective for us. So, so rig it up. Nico, rig it. If you got any questions, drop them in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to hear if you try this out and you have any success with it. That's one of our... Uh, you know, go to's that has been kind of in the vault that I wanted to share with you to see if I could, if I could uh, get somebody else to have some success that they they weren't having either in high pressure situations or when you're fishing behind people that are throwing like your standard senkos or something, uh, or other standard crawfish style baits, neds. This is a great follow up uh, in those areas, and uh, you'll get bit, no question about it. Hope you find that tip helpful. Please like and subscribe. And we'll talk to you next time on the water.